Okay, so I kind of want to do a little bit of a freestyle lecture with this. I, I don't, I don't really want to write this down, but I do want to talk about it, and I do want to share it on my main channel. So I want to explain this really interesting thought I had about faciality machines and AI. So I've been thinking a lot about how to like, how do I exactly explain what the faciality machine is? It's, it's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? And, uh, you know, faciality is one of the more underexplored areas of Deleuze and Guattari because it's kind of hard to understand when you first look at it. And, you know, I think, I think about faciality a lot and uh, that's partially because I just naturally see faces everywhere. And so the intuition between, you know, faciality, faces, and all these things, you know, comes to light, right? So I was thinking about, you know, how in the faciality plateau, you know, Deleuze and Guattari talk about, like, you know, how cinema is used to frame characters with, like, close-ups and things like that. And I was thinking about specifically the cinema that's kind of produced in, like, a judgment, right so this could be like a court judgment this could be like somebody just judging your personality it could be whatever right but it's a judgment right and what's produced at this kind of intersection so what's happened is, is that a cinema is suddenly rapidly constructed where the narrative is essentially like you have been accused of x right what is your response right now this produces the faciality machine. This produces actually the binarization of the faciality machine, right? So let's think about this situation for a second, right? You got <clears throat> you got the subject, right? You know, you got the subjectification of these different characters in this relationship. Most importantly, the subject of the accused, right? But we also have the judge, and you could even argue the the um, who's that a guy who like is basically like the bodyguard. I can't remember. Whatever. Anyways, um <clears throat> you've got this you've got this these subjects, right? And then you also have, you know, the white wall of uh signifiance, right? Which is essentially, you know, the 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 facts and states of everything that's that's going on. All these signified thingies right that are being pulled into these subjects right so when the subject goes and says well this is this is my response to the accusations right this causes the judge to produce a binary from this machine it's he's looking into it through his eyes right and he's saying is it good or is it bad is he, is he a bad guy or is he a good guy right <clears throat> so let's take this problem to AI for a second. See, I've always had problems with people saying that, you know, AI is this intelligence machine. I don't, I don't think it's an intelligence machine. I think what's fooling us, and this is a really interesting proposition, is, is that the interface between me communicating or you communicating through a LLM or some kind of, you know, AI generated video or something, whether it be like we're talking to it through a chat app or we are viewing its, its output on YouTube mislabeled as real footage or whatever, right? <clears throat> you know, these things... Okay, but yeah, all of these user interface uh, elements, right, <coughs> construct an interface for a human to interact with, right? And this is, pro and, and essentially, this relationship that is constructed through the interface, the interface is the cinema here, right? It is constructing a very similar relationship between the judge and the accused and the human and the AI. Like when I think of whether or not I want to show like AI doesn't know what it's talking about, right? We go to the AI, right? And we ask it a message, right? And we're trying to prove it right or wrong. You know, this is, this is the classical, this is like a modification of the classical Turing test, right? And we're trying to determine whether or not the output sounds like something that was generated by a algorithm or something that was generated more like a human, right? 
And when it responds to us, we make a decision. We make a binary choice that makes that, right? And when people tell me like, oh, these things are intelligent, these things are whatever, I'm just thinking to myself, no, you idiot. It's the interface that makes you think it's intelligent. Like, let's think of a video game for a second. You know, Pokemon, right? Everybody thinks Pokemon. <laughs> when has a Pokemon game made you cry? <laughs> Clearly, somebody hasn't played Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. Yeah, that game will make you cry. That game made me cry. I thought I was tough. I was like, I can handle this. I can handle this. That fucking game makes me cry. God damn it. God damn it. And you know why that game makes you cry? It's because it makes you believe that those characters are like people, right? Like Grovile, he's not just like a lizard that like does stuff. The way that the narrative constructs him makes you a character that thinks, hey, that is actually a cool character, right? Like this is a guy who, who does all this cool stuff. I'm not spoiling it. I'm not spoiling it. Just play the fucking game. Just play the fucking game. But, um, <clears throat> the, the point is, is, is that the theater that is produced through the interface is what makes you think that there's any humanity behind any of this, right? All these guys have created is a weird little machine that can, you know, produce characters and just wants to please you in this manner, right? It just wants to have you answer yes all the time. Essentially, these guys have created the Sympatron 5000, and it makes you really wonder, well, if they're building a machine, right, that is the Sympatron 5000, then what does that say about their creator? And what does it say about their creator that they think that this produces a unique kind of intelligence that is not produced through the faciality machines of other media machines, like, you know, the ones that we might see in a video game? So, anyways, this was just some sor short commentary I thought you might find interesting. I think it helps people kind of understand a bit about how the faciality machine works. I know it's really hard to understand. It's one of those things where it's just like every so often I'm like, aha, that's, just, ah, it gets make makes sense now. So I just wanted to share that. So, have a good one. <laughs>